Listen, if you have an Etsy shop or a small business or you're trying to be a content creator, just make money online in any way at all, and you haven't made video content yet, you're, you're miles behind, like the train has left the station. In this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on Etsy listing videos, but a lot of these principles could apply and help your social media game as well. So whether you have made some videos with not so great success or you haven't even started yet, hopefully some of these tips will be helpful and let me know if you try them out. In any case, there is no denying that video is king on the internet right now in 2022, probably gonna be into 2023 and beyond. And I, I am blocking the next person that I see on Twitter complaining that they don't have any Instagram engagement. And then I go to their Instagram page and they only post photos. Instagram has made it crystal clear that they do not want photos on their platform anymore, okay? <laughs> so even though you can post a photo, doesn't mean you should. So if you haven't made videos yet, you might be pretty nervous about it, which is understandable. There's so many amazing quality videos out there, especially on like Instagram and TikTok and other Etsy listing videos. So you might be a little worried that yours aren't gonna be good enough, or maybe you don't have a good quality camera, or your phone is older, or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you don't wanna show yourself or your voice on the internet. But honestly, if you do wanna get started posting video content and you haven't already, Etsy listing videos are a great first step for many reasons. They're only five to 15 seconds long, and they don't have sound. And if you use some of my tips, you may or may not even need to edit the videos at all, just shoot and upload. Before we get into the how of making an Etsy listing video, we need to talk about the why. Of course, if you posted a listing recently, you have seen this handy little statistic that Etsy says they have found that buyers are more likely to purchase an item with a video. And if you haven't noticed, if you don't like shop on Etsy much yourself, if you're on a desktop and you are just browsing either in the search feed or your home recommendations, if you mouse over a listing and it has a video, it will automatically start playing. And now on the Etsy app as well, if you are browsing your search results or the recommendations feed, then you can swipe through photos without clicking on the listing and it will start playing a video if there is one. There's no denying that getting views on Etsy is hard, and this will make it even easier. So right now, as I'm recording this in, uh, what month is it, October 2022, not every listing on Etsy has a video, obviously. Even some of the top shops that I've seen, like I browse on Etsy myself looking for things, and even shops that are in like the hundreds of thousands of sales don't all have listing videos. So this is an excellent way to get your listings to stand out. The purpose of an Etsy listing video is to get the buyer to experience the product in a way that they can't really with photos and certainly they can't touch and see the item in person. They'll be able to see how it moves or functions, how it might change color in the light, how different sides of it look, really any aspect that cannot be captured in a still photo. And my favorite part, just like the cherry on top is not only will this possibly encourage somebody to make a purchase that wouldn't have normally just by looking at photos, but it will also potentially discourage negative reviews because they maybe didn't understand what the product was or they thought it was gonna be something different, so on and so forth. I'm sure if you've gotten reviews on your Etsy shop, you have gotten one of these reviews or have you seen them when you've read reviews from something that you are intending to buy. With the philosophical and the subliminal stuff out of the way, let's get practical. So what should be in the video? If you're doing something else while you're watching this video or if you're just listening to it while you're working or whatever, stop and listen to this part, this is important. And I know I've done a lot of shop reviews and I see y'all doing this, so just listen. <laughs> The only focus of your Etsy listing video should be the actual product that is for sale. Point blank, period, no exceptions, do not pass go, do not collect $200. I see you out there using slideshows or pictures in a slideshow of your other products that are not the one that you're trying to sell in this listing, or you're just using it to like advertise your shop and putting like your logo in a slideshow. Stop it. Stop it right now. If you wanna make a video that's like advertising your shop as a whole, the best place for that is your Etsy's shop story section, but still no slideshows. And that goes for your listing videos, the shop story video that you can put, uh, or anything that you post on social media. Nobody is gonna watch a slideshow. This is not middle school English class, okay? 
All right, now let's set up to record the video. All you need is a good location, a backdrop, a phone or camera of some sort, and of course your product. When I take my videos, I do f the listing photos and video all at the same time, so I don't have to take down and set up and everything is consistent. So if you wanna make some videos for your listings and you also need to update the photos, just do it all at the same time. Find yourself a sunny window or go outside for once and find a good spot that's not like in too bright of direct sunlight, but still not shadowy. That will just reduce the need for editing or brightening the footage. But if you're a nocturnal hermit like me, you're gonna need some good daylight bulbs or daylight lights. An extra pro tip, if you take your photos indoors, that is why your photos probably look a little bit yellow and dim because normal light bulbs that you would use in your house are warm light, so they're going to make everything look yellow. So you want to buy daylight light bulbs, which are going to be white. I have these lamps from Amazon that are programmable, dimmable, and you can set them to white light or warm light if you want. And I'm using two of them and a ring light to film right now. Now for your backdrop. So the best in most cases is going to be a plain white backdrop. The reason that you want a plain white background or backdrop is because that helps your camera or your phone to adjust itself if you have it set on auto. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's probably set on auto. And that is a term called white balance. I'm not a pro photographer by any means. I use my camera on auto for most things also. Just a plain piece of printer paper will do if the item is really, really small. I use a piece of white foam board from the dollar store for mine. Then if you have something larger, you have a lot of options. You could get a roll of plain white paper. If you have old Christmas wrapping paper laying around and it has, it doesn't have those lines on the back, it's just blank, you could probably get away with using that if you're careful about what it's on top of. You could use a white sheet or you could use a legit photo backdrop if you have some money burning a hole in your pocket, but usually it's, it's perfectly fine to use whatever you have laying around the house. So you want to move around a bit to make sure you're in good lighting, but with no shadows. And a trick to make sure that you don't have any shadows, especially if you are setting up and you don't have the actual product out to see if it's gonna make a shadow, just put your hand over the backdrop and see if your hand makes a shadow or not. I'm kind of surprised at how many people don't know this. Like even in my personal life, people that aren't taking photos, if you want to get rid of those lines that have come in through your, the blinds on your windows, just flip them up the other way and there's no lines. And if there is a shadow or maybe too much light in one direction, I will take either another piece of foam board or something like a piece of a cardboard box to kind of shield and cover over that spot to eliminate any shadows. And then, or perhaps first, I should say, uh, make sure you grab your products. And yes, I said products batch creation, get into it. Product photos, listing photos, listing videos, social media posts, make them all in batches. Work smarter and not harder. An optional step here is to use props, but do it sparingly. It's very important that you don't just confuse the buyer on what they're actually buying by having too many props in the background. A few examples of this, if you sell coasters, you could show a glass on the coaster. Or if you have candles, you could set up the candle in a way that is reminiscent of the scent of the candle. So like if you had a fall candle, you might put some fall leaves around it or something like that and then show it actually burning. Something that is related to the scent but not super distracting. Like I wouldn't put the candle with like a bunch of other like candlesticks and you know just stuff laying around. Like just Keep it simple. So now that you figured out what and where you're going to record, let's set up the camera or the phone. It does not matter what kind of phone or camera you have. I promise an iPhone 4 is still probably gonna be okay. So you can set it to record a video and record it and be on your merry way, but I take one little extra step before I start that makes it so much easier. So if you can figure out how, or if the device is actually capable of doing this, I don't know if you can do this on like a digital camera, but certainly if you have a newer model smartphone, you can do this. But I set my phone to record a square or a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. This has some positives and negatives, so just figure out if you want to do this for yourself, but it really helps me a lot. So when you turn on your phone and start recording, it's automatically going to do a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. The same as with your Etsy listing photos, they want it to be in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. You can opt to do all of your photos in the 4 by 3, 
but I do the main photo in 4x3 and then the rest in 1x1. You can always crop it, of course, afterwards, but the reason I just record one-to-one -one in the first place is you don't know what's in frame. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to tell if, when you crop it if you're going to crop something out or if you got far enough away to be able to get everything in the frame. And I know what you're thinking, Abby, duh, just turn the phone sideways. No, no, no. That's not the same because 9 by 16 is not the same as 4 by 3, okay? It's gonna cut something off somewhere. You can use whichever one you want if you want to do one by one or four by three. I would just strongly recommend to not try to upload anything, video or photos to Etsy in nine by 16, because it is going to be cropped very awkwardly. You're not gonna know where the crop is. Etsy is not super reliable with their cropping tool and it will get cut off because like I was mentioning at the beginning of the video, your listing videos can autoplay and they're going to be cut down to four by three. So if you are showing, like if you have a long necklace and you took it in nine by 16, they're only gonna see like this much of this big, you see what I'm saying? The only downside of this method of shooting in a smaller frame is it's harder to reuse them for social media because like Instagram and TikTok, like nine by 16. So you could do both, just switch back and forth. All right, now let's actually start recording. The fastest and most efficient way, I think, is to just record each clip and make sure everything is in frame and that it is within the five to 15 seconds. But if you don't mind editing a little bit or if you want to or need to use a tripod, you can just record a continuous video and chop it up if you know how to edit. When you record, you need some kind of motion. So don't just record a video being still because that is no better than a photo. And that could be the camera moving or you moving and manipulating the item yourself. And it can be just as simple as picking up the item and showing the different sides. And if you are like ashamed of your hands, don't worry, unless they're covered in like Cheeto dust or something, nobody's gonna care. Now, once you've recorded all of your clips, stick with me, before you start tearing down your setup, going back inside, packing it up, take a second or a few minutes probably, Rewatch the clips that you just recorded and make sure that everything is in frame or that like one of them didn't have funky lighting or something or like a bug flew into the shot. Cause that's gonna save you a lot of time because you can just re-record it right then instead of having to drag all of your stuff out or getting frustrated that you spent all this time recording the videos and then you just don't post a video for that one. Now, if you've done listing photos already, then you probably know how to get videos and stuff onto your computer. And now if you're using a phone to shoot and record your videos and photos, there is a new Etsy sellers app. So it is called the Etsy seller app, not the sell on Etsy app. That one is older. I don't know if they're gonna continue supporting that or if it's just going to be the Etsy seller app. The new Etsy seller app has a blue icon at this moment and the sell on Etsy has an orange one. But the new app will let you upload videos and photos from your phone. Previously, the Sell on Etsy app only let you do photos. So now you can do photos and videos on your phone, which is great. Personally, I put mine on Google Drive from my phone and then upload them to my computer that way so I can have the clips on my computer if I want to reuse them for something else. So I do edit my videos slightly. There are free apps out there for phones or some phones even have like a built-in video editing, photo editing kind of situation within like the photo gallery. But I already use Canva to edit my listing photos and they now let you edit videos as well. I have the pro version, but I think you can do a lot of this stuff with the free version. I mean, I'm I'm sure there are better apps out there. I do have like an actual video editor that I use for my YouTube videos, but I'm familiar with Canva and it's just super simple stuff. And I can see them all at the same time so I can make sure they are relatively consistent, especially with my photos, make sure that if I adjust the brightness, they're all kind of the same. And I add a watermark to the photos and videos as well. I get this question a lot, um, so I do strongly recommend to use a watermark on Etsy even if you are just starting out. Actually, use a watermark on any photo you post anywhere on the internet. There is a rumor that having watermarks on your Etsy listing photos or video is bad completely false. Something about SEO and not liking text on photos, but most photos now have text on them somewhere. The purpose of a watermark is to protect you from sketchy characters online, taking your photos and either claiming them as their own or maybe reproducing the product that you're selling and 
selling it, you know, by either scamming people or making a really cheap subpar knockoff. So they don't completely stop anybody, obviously, but it does make it a bit easier to say, hey, that's my photo when your name's on it. You wanna put it over top of the actual product. I try to like hide mine strategically in the photo. Like it's almost a game, like my favorite part of editing, trying to put it in there in a place where it cannot be cropped out. If you put it like off to the side or like in the corner of the picture, they can just crop it out or like color over it, you know, but if you put it on top of the product, then they can't easily. Or you can tell that, oh, they tried to blur that out. What is that watermark? The topic of today's video did come from a comment suggestion. So thank you for those who suggest video topics and let me know in the comments if you wanna see more. And also if you have any other tips for like shooting videos or any ideas for specific niches that you're in, let us know as well. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.